Good morning, church. Welcome to our virtual online service here at the Bible Baptist Church of Warriors Mark. I'm Pastor Dave Donnelly, and I'm so thankful that you chose to worship with us today, whether it's in your living room or wherever you're at. We certainly hope that you came prepared to meet the Lord where you're at today, that you brought your Bible, and that you've been prepared to, uh, to worship today as we spend these moments together. We've got some announcements as we get started with our service this morning. And for husbands and children, this is probably the most important announcement you're going to hear today. It is Mother's Day. If you haven't put that on your calendar, if you haven't been reminded yet, it's not too late. The day's not over, and you can still do something to set aside some time to honor the moms in your life, honor the wives that have made uh, the contributions into your children's lives. Think about the women that have been a part of your life, and let's revere and appreciate and honor them today as we set aside this time to, uh, to, to honor women for Mother's Day. I know the Bible has a lot to say about that. We're going to have some elements in our service today that are going to honor the ladies and the women and the mothers in our lives. And I look forward to, uh, to spending this, the, these next few moments as we uh, look to this special Mother's Day service together. And I'd just like to take a moment to say Happy Mother's Day to my mother and my mother-in-law. I really had a privilege to grow up in a godly home, and I really appreciate all that my mother contributed to me. And I'd also just like to mention for my wife, we have eight children together. Our home's busy. She's reminded every day that she's a mother, but it's not every day that we get to revere and be appreciative and be thankful for all that she's done. So uh, to my wife, happy Mother's Day. My children are really blessed to have you as their mother. And speaking of my wife, she is starting up again a ladies' Bible study in the near future. Uh, you may remember that she just completed one here in the past week or so through the book of Philippians. Well, she'll be starting in studying another book with the ladies. So if you were a part of the old study, ladies, you can be a part of the new one. Now's a great chance to get signed up for that. Uh, just give my wife a message on Facebook or send something to me. Send me something in my email. That's pastor at BibleBaptistConnect.org. That's pastor at BibleBaptistConnect.org. And I will send you the information to be involved in that online Zoom Bible study. The other Bible study we've had going for the last few weeks now is on Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock with Kelsey, my daughter. And it's for the teenage and college age girls. It's been doing very well. Uh, but maybe you're a teen or college girl that hasn't been a part of this in, in the recent weeks. Uh, you can still be involved. And we'd love to have you. So if you'd like information on that, again, send me a message. Uh, by Facebook or by email, and I'll get you information for how to get connected with that Wednesday night study. Of course, uh, one of the things that we continue to make announcements about, which almost needs no announcement anymore, is the fact that we are going to continue with our online services until further notice. We're hoping as soon as we move to the yellow phase to uh, begin doing drive-in church services, so that's something to look forward to. Uh, and I hope that when that day comes, we can transition well as a church to begin to gather together in the weeks ahead. When that day comes, we'll let you know. And as plans develop, we will uh, certainly communicate that to you. But keep that in mind as we look forward to meeting together again, hopefully in the near future. Now, let's take a moment and look to the Lord in a word of prayer. We have a lot of prayer requests this week, and uh, certainly... We need to be praying for each other as a church family. Dear Lord, I just come to you this morning. I thank you for Mother's Day that we can celebrate. I pray that we might always take time to reflect on the, the ladies, the women, the mothers in our life who have contributed and made our families uh, what they are and made us who we are today. I pray, Lord, that it might be a day of celebration in their lives and that they might feel loved uh, because of the time that we spend. Lord, I pray also for... Uh, the needs of our church family today. I pray for the Mathers family, Mandy Houston's grandfather, who passed away this past week. I pray that you would give comfort there and through this grief and allow them to, uh, <clears throat> to just find comfort through this time. I also pray for the Barr family. I pray for Ken Barr's brother, who just died this past week as well. I pray that you'd comfort them, especially in this time when so many people, family can't just get together. And we can't go to, to a funeral even to gather uh, in, in groups that way. And so, Lord, I just pray that you would deal with the grief and 
and comfort them through this time as well. I, Lord, I thank you for Dan Norris. I thank you that he's home from the hospital. I pray that you'd continue to help him to recover there. Lord, I pray for Larry Wenrick this morning. Uh, he's found this mass in his bladder, and I pray that uh, the doctors might have wisdom to know how to treat that, that he might get the treatment he needs, and that you might give him the healing that he needs in his life right now as well. I also pray for Barry Booney's Uncle Dave, who's continuing to deal with cancer and uh, dealing with the pain of it right now. I just pray that you'd take away that pain, that you would show him that your grace is sufficient, and that you would uh, give him what he needs to go through this trial at this time. I also pray for Dave Gummo as he is going for heart catheterization, Judy's brother, and I pray that you just give him uh, peace and safety through it and give the doctors wisdom. And Lord, I also pray for Donna Walker this week as she goes in for another surgery on her hand. Allow the doctors to have wisdom as they, uh, as they operate and allow this to deal with the pain and deal with the mobility so that she can recover quickly and uh, be able to get use of that hand back uh, very, in, in very short order. I thank you, Lord, for the service to come. I thank you for the, even in the time when we are quarantined, that we can still praise you and honor you. I do pray for those that are continuing to battle this coronavirus right now. I pray that you would uh, protect those that aren't sick and, Lord, heal those that are. And I pray for those of us here in our church family. Protect us, Lord. Meet our needs. Help those that maybe have lost income through this time to be able to know that uh, they, they can rely on you for the needs that they have. I pray that you would help us, Lord, to get our county reopened quickly so that we can be back together and transition back to life as what the new normal will look like. And I pray that we'd be able to do that uh, very soon. And I ask it now in Jesus' name. Amen. As we look to the rest of our service now this morning, we are going to spend some time to honor mothers. If you may remember the last few weeks, we've been asking some of the kids from our BBC church family to send in some answers to questions. We've compiled them all together into our Mother's Day segment today. Instead of our regular kids segment, we'll be letting the kids do the segment. So hopefully you will enjoy that. We'll follow that with some special music this morning from the Bryants. Chelsea and Charity are going to be bringing us a special song, and following that, we'll have our morning message as we look to Proverbs 31. What's your mommy really good at? Uh, Cooking. Major at. I can come to her with my problems and she always gives me godly advice and she's a great role model. Exercise. Mommy, favorite place to go? To a door. And she loves to go to Applebee's. The beach? The beach. The store. Her bed for a nap. <laughs> Dairy Queen. Queen. What do I do when you're not around? I don't know. How am I supposed to know that? Have, Have a girl's night. night. Steals all the Reese's pieces in the house. What does mommy like about daddy? What does mommy like about daddy? Um, that you have a beard. That my dad is very hardworking, very intelligent, and he's very compassionate. What does mommy do for a job? Mm, everything. Uh, nurse. Uh, nurse. Homeschool me. Payroll. Payroll. My mom is 35 years old. Uh, like 39? <laughs> Seventy-two. Thirty-five. <laughs> Sixty-four. No, twenty. No, twenty-four. Eleven. Makes your mommy happy. Please. Happy. 
You take a whole lot. Earrings. Apparently. Earrings. Um, get him clean up. When I do my schoolwork. Asher. Yes, mother. How do I make you laugh? You don't. I take Tickles. I don't know. What does mommy do to make you laugh? I don't know, mommy. What do I do? I don't know. She acts like she's so funny. <laughs> what do you and your mommy do together? We draw pictures and and draw pictures sometimes. We think and that's it. We go in the woods and we um, hunt or we um, take a walk with her and get some mushrooms. What is something mommy always says to you? Thank you. Or I love you. Pick them toys. Do the silverware. I love you. I, I love, love you. you. I love you.
Thank you to Chelsea and Charity for that special music this morning. Certainly brightened the day, and I hope that as we look now to God's Word, that uh, you have your Bibles with you. If you would, turn in your Bibles to Proverbs chapter 31. Proverbs 31 this morning, we'll be looking at a message that I've entitled, A Mother's Might. A Mother's Might. Now, um, before we get into it this morning, um, as you look to Proverbs 31, we're not going to read the whole chapter, uh, but we are going to read some select verses. And uh, starting in verse 1, it says this, The words of King Lemuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him. Then let's look down to verse 10. It says, Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. And then let's look down to the end of the chapter as we get started this morning. It says this, Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. Now I understand as we look to this this morning, and we deal with this topic of Mother's Day every year, and uh, we, we, we look into this chapter, that Mother's Day always comes with mixed emotions, doesn't it? It's a day for the celebration of motherhood. It's a day for those with close families and close children. It can be a time when, uh, really, it just becomes a very special day. But you realize very quickly, when you think about the significance of Mother's Day, that not everyone is a mother. Not every lady is a mother, and not every mother even has all of their children. And not every child still has their mother. And sadly, especially in a time such as this, when we're here in quarantine and shut down, there are some mothers, even out here amongst you, I'm sure today, who are extra weary with the responsibilities that have been piled upon them, disruptions, schooling, confinement with your families. Maybe you've been thrust into roles that you never thought you would have to do. And maybe even as a mother this morning, you may be feeling like, man, I've just been failing at motherhood. Well, I want us just to share a couple of thoughts with you just as a pretext this morning before we really look into what the Proverbs 31 woman is all about. And I'm going to put these on the screen as I read them to you. So I just want to share with you some thoughts about the different women that experience Mother's Day. It says, to the woman who is experiencing her first Mother's Day since losing her mom, we grieve with you. To the woman who's praying for that phone call from an estranged child, we pray with you. To the woman who's content, feeling no call to the role of motherhood, we celebrate with you. To the woman who is grieving her child that's been lost to miscarriage, stillbirth, or death, we remember with you. To that woman who is struggling with a relationship with her own mother because it's painful, strained, or toxic, we support you. To that woman who is pregnant, signal, single, and wondering what happens next, we encourage you. To that woman who is hopeful that the test will be positive this time, we're hopeful with you. And to that woman who's waiting for that child who was born in another time and another place to finally come to that home that you have always envisioned for them, we wait with you. And to anyone for whom the word mom carries a sting or a heaviness or a pain, we have deep love for you. We see you. We love you. And most of all, God sees you. God loves you, and Jesus loves you most of all. As we look at Proverbs 31, I wanted to put those things just in front of you this morning because we realize not every woman comes from the same perspective when it comes to Mother's Day. 
But I want us to talk this morning about Proverbs 31, this virtuous woman, not from the perspective of, ladies, here's, who, here's the gold standard, here's the, all the ways that you're falling short. No, I want us to look at it from the perspective of, here is the, the plan, here is the, the mighty power, the mighty significance that God has put in womanhood and motherhood. And it all starts in verse 1. It says, the words of King Lemuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him. King Lemuel. You know, not much is known about him. In fact, he's only mentioned right here in Proverbs 31. That's the only time he's mentioned in the Bible. And really, the only significance that we have regarding King Lemuel is the Hebrew word that is the meaning behind his name, which means simply belonging to God. King Lemuel, belonging to God. And while we don't know much about the nature of this king, this chapter here, Proverbs 31, deals primarily, if you think about it, of what we know about his mother. What does it say? These were the words of King Lemuel, but they weren't really his words, were they? It was the prophecy that his mother taught him. You see, these were her words. This was her teaching that was ingrained in her son, the king. So as a whole, when we read down through these verses, these are the ideals that she has ingrained, that she has instilled into the life of her son who would become the king. This speaks to the might and the power that a mother has, especially over her children. And that brings us to our first point this morning. Do you see what we see in verse 1? That mothers are designed, mothers are meant to have an influence. Mothers are designed to have an influence. Verse 1, again, the words of King Lemuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him. Do you realize that the only words that God decides to record in Scripture from King Lemuel are words that his mother gave him? They weren't words that his great philosophers that were under him gave him. They weren't things that he learned during his time reigning as a king. They were the things that his mother instilled in him as a young child. His mother was his greatest influence. You see, she warned him also of other things that would try to influence him. And obviously some of those things stuck. Do you realize, ladies, this morning... You have a great influence over children. You know, this is the great reason why so many women typically are the ones that teach our young children at, ter at church. And boy, I'm looking forward to that time when we can get back to teaching our children here in this church. But our ladies, the women of the church, they seem to have a special way with children, don't they? They seem to be able to teach more effectively. They have an influence and whether you're a mother of your own children or whether maybe your children have grown up and gone, the fact is, as a lady, you have a special ability to influence children. And may I say that the things that you learn as a young child, those are the things that stick with you and influence you through the rest of your life. These were the words of King Lemuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him. Then let's look down to verse 3. She gives some warnings against things that would otherwise try to influence King Lemuel. And she says, Give not thy strength unto women, nor thy ways to that which destroyeth kings. You see, the fact is, every child eventually moves out of the home. Every child grows up and makes it into those teenage and young, young adult years. And during those years especially, they will and they are influenced by other people, by other women, by ideas, by philosophies of the world and culture around, him, around them. And you know, I think as parents, that's one of the hardest things to watch. It's one of the hardest things because as parents, you sit back, you have to let go. They're out making a way for themselves. And you know that you've taught them as a young person, as a child in your home. But now they are out under the under influences of the world around them. They now must rely on what, we must now rely on what, our, what we've taught our kids. 
and pray that they will return back to that teaching that they learned in the home and not allow themselves to be influenced in wrong ways by the culture around them. Do you see other women, other ideas, other philosophies, other people? These will never have a greater interest in our welfare than our mothers. Did you ever think about that? Do you know who cares about you more than anyone else on this earth? It's your mother. She always has your best interest at heart. That's why we have to be careful what our influence is. And you realize also when your mother gives you instruction, when she gives you this influence and upbringing, there will never be another person that knows your character, your motives, or your desires in life as greatly as it, and as intimately as your mother does. So where is God in this? You say, well, mothers have all this influence. Aren't we supposed to be influenced by God? Well, surely we are. God is supposed to be our great influence. We are supposed to be influenced by God. And how does God do that? God tells us in his word that he influences us through his word. So if God influences us through his word, how does the word get to us? Well, the word gets to us when it's taught and demonstrated to us, especially as young children in the home and oftentimes by our mothers. You see, mothers are an agent used by God to be an influence for his purpose in our lives. That's why Psalm 119.11 tells us, Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. O mothers, take the moment. Take the time while your child is still teachable to instill them with God's word. The Bible says it will not return void. What else does she warn him against regarding influence? We see it in verses 4 and 5. She says this, It's not for kings, O Lemuel. It is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes strong drink, lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the judgment of any of the afflicted. You know, I'm not going to preach a message on alcohol right now, but the fact of the matter is there are many people, especially during this time when we are quarantined, that are relying on alcohol to get them through. There is something wrong in our culture, and I will say it's a sad day in our culture when we can't get a haircut, but we can get a bottle of wine. It's a sad day in our grocery stores when we're even selling alcohol in the first place, but when you walk down the alcohol aisle and it's well stocked, but you go down to the toilet paper aisle and it's empty. There's a problem in our society. All around us, people are trying to allow themselves to be influenced by alcohol. You see, many times people just want to numb themselves in this day and age. Don't allow yourself to be that someone who would have your judgment impaired and your feelings numbed through alcohol or drugs. Lemuel's mother says, that's not for kings. That's not for someone who wants to go do something and be something of their life. This is something that you have got to stay away from. If we want to have clear thinking, and we want to have thinking that's informed by the Word of God, we have to keep Romans 12, 2 at the forefront. Be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So mothers are meant to have an influence. But secondly, we see mothers are meant to have an impact. Mothers are meant to have an impact. Let's look at verse 10. It says, Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. Do you realize that the impact of a godly woman is truly priceless? You cannot put a price on the impact of a godly mother. And how does she impact us? Well, we see it in various ways down through these verses. Let's look at verse 12. It says, She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. You see, she impacts with her goodness in the lives of her husband and in her family. 
It says she will do him good. You realize there will never be a greater cheerleader for your good, for your prosperity, and for your happiness, or for your growth and as a person more than your mother. She impacts us with her goodness. Verse 13 shows that she has an impact with her attitude. Verse 13 says, she seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. You think, what's that have to do with attitude? Do you see that one little word that snuck in there? Yes, she works hard, but how and why does she work? What's her attitude? She works willingly. She's proactive at her contributions. She's not asking to be pampered, although she probably deserves it. No, she works willingly. She doesn't need to be asked. She sees a need, she works to meet that need. Do you ever have a mom or a lady in your life who sees things that you don't? I know sometimes my wife comes home and she maybe has had a long day or she's done some things and been out shopping and I've been watching the kids for a while and, you know, it just kind of, you know how things are as dads, right? Things kind of just pile up, right? You know, the kids, well, they were playing with the trains and, then they were praying with the blocks, and oh, when we all got snacks out in the kitchen, and oh, we all took our shoes off and left them in the, in the doorway. And you know what? You know, as a dad, sometimes you don't always think of those things. <laughs> it's not that I'm not willing to, to do those things, to pick them up. I certainly will. But you know, she comes in, she sees those things, and what does she do? She solves them. She does it willingly. She, she helps to pick up. She helps to recognize these are some of the needs. And she works to meet them. And you know what? Attitude is everything. Attitude is everything. And attitude is something that is more easily caught in our lives than taught. Have you caught some of the attitude from your mother? Hopefully you have. She impacts us with her attitude. Verse 15 tells us that she impacts us through provision. Verse 15 says, She riseth also while it is yet night. She giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. She rises while it's night. She gives things, she she prepares things for those in her household. And she gets up early to do it. She makes sure everyone's needs are met. She makes sure everyone in the house is well fed. She makes sure that everyone is cared for even if that requires losing sleep. Doesn't that epitomize maybe a mother, that role model that you've had in your life? Someone who's willing to get up early, to make the breakfast, to help with the beds, to deal with the laundry, to do some of those things that are extra, are over and abound, and abound just in order to meet our basic needs. She impacts us through her provision. And then verse 16 tells us she impacts us with her vision. It says, She considereth a field, she buyeth it. With the fruit of her hand she planteth a vineyard. She has a vision for the long term. You know, it's easy, ladies, especially in the midst of all of this pandemic problem, to get just wrapped up in the day-to-day. The monotony gets to you, the lack of schedule kind of just, you know, blends. You never quite know what day it is. It's the same thing day in and day out. All of these short-term needs, I have to plan breakfast and lunch and dinner. I have to make sure somebody has something to wear. I have to make sure that their schoolwork gets done today. It's easy to get wrapped up and not be able to see the forest for the trees. But what does the lady, the mother, who is godly in this virtuous woman that's identified, it says she impacts people with vision. What does she do? She's not so wrapped up in the day-to-day that she can't see the far off, the need for planning. She goes in and looks at a field. She identifies a need, a long term. Do you know vineyards take a long time to develop before they begin to bear fruit? She sees the long-term impact of buying a field, planting a vineyard, recognizing there are not just short-term needs, but long-term as well. And mothers, may I say, you do this every day. You do this every day in the lives of your children, don't you? When you lose sight of that vision, mothers, those are the times when you grow weary of motherhood. It's those times when you're not able to see the forest for the trees. 
when you are so caught up in the nitty-gritty that you can't see the long-term vision that you're casting in the lives of your children. It's those are the days that you get weary. But when you realize that every day contributes another day to cultivating a life that's one day going to be sent out and represent the Lord in the stage of the planet Earth that they're going to live in, when you realize that you have a long-term, long-range goal, this is a marathon and not a sprint, when you realize those things to be reality in the lives of your children, you inspire vision in them as well. Because the immediate needs are always there, they will always be around, but we can't neglect the vision that we need for the future as well. Mothers are meant to have an influence. Mothers are meant to have an impact. And thirdly, mothers are meant to be an inspiration. In what ways are mothers to be an inspiration? Let's look in verse 18. It says this, She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth out not by night. She inspires us through her work ethic. Oh my I used to be in business. <laughs> I used to see a lot of resumes come across my desk. And you know, you can put lots of stuff on a resume, but until someone gets there and actually begins to do the work, you really don't know what kind of work ethic they have. They can have credentials, they can have experience, they can be here, they can be there. But you know what? Until someone comes and gives you a day's work, you don't really understand whether they understand the nature of having a good work ethic. And you know, work ethic is something, again, that's more often caught than taught. Mothers, your children are watching you. When they see you and they see you working and working diligently and having this work ethic, they will begin to catch that in their life as well. You inspire them. Verse 20 says this, She stretcheth out her hand to the poor, yea, she reacheth forth her hands to the needy. Do you know that you can inspire your children, you can inspire your, your family with compassion? Compassion to those that need, that have needs, people that you can, you can maybe meet their needs in different ways. And do you know, when you see needs that maybe other people miss, what are you saying? You're saying, I need to be careful about these, these people, not to just run roughshod over people that have needs, but no, care about them, uh, you know, identify with them, see what their needs really are. That inspires those of your family. What's verse 22 say? It says, She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. You know, sometimes, ladies, you just inspire us with your sense of style. You say, well, that seems rather vain. Well, what would we do in life if we didn't have people that had a sense of style? I am so thankful that we have in our church some ladies that come and decorate and do some things, to especially like when we have a special banquet or whatnot, to decorate. And they have a sense of style about them. They, 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 they lighten the tone. They, they bring out the, the theme. And when you walk in, you can, you can just in a, in a non-verbal, in an inspirational kind of way, understand what they are communicating just through their sense of style. Aren't we thankful that, uh, you can, that we can have mothers that would inspire us in that way? You know, I'm thankful for just in my own, my own life that my wife plans for me to look good. Now, that's a hard, tall order for someone like me. But about, just about every Sunday, um, I would, uh, well, at least when we first got married, I would go to my closet and I would begin to, I have a system. Can I just say I have a system? My system in my closet, I have a system so that, you know, I have my shirts, I have my pants, I have my suit coats. They're all lined up in a certain way. And so I take off the pants then I find the first appropriate shirt that would match those pants. Then I find the first appropriate coat that would match those those two other components. And then once I do that, I go to my tie rack and I find which tie I think will match those three. And whatever the first one in order is, that's the one I pick. It's very logical. It's very thought out. It's very methodical. And I always thought it worked well for me. Until my wife came along and said, that's not much of a sense of style. 
She was still willing to date me, even though I didn't seem to have much before we got married. But nonetheless, she makes sure, especially on Sunday mornings, what does she do to me now? She comes and says, now, before you go start picking stuff out of your closet, let me help you. And she'll go select the pants. She'll go select the coat. She'll make sure that the tie matches the shirt. And she will make sure with what she has to work with in front of you here today <laughs> that I can have somewhat of a sense of style, of the fact that I might match today. And, uh, and even today, my wife picked out what I have to wear. And I'm thankful for that. My wife wants to make sure that I look good. She does that to our children. She does that for our family. She does it for herself. Ladies, you have an inspirational ability to put style into your family. And we're thankful for that. Verse 23 says this. It says, Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. Do you know, this is maybe a difficult one for some of you to think about, especially husbands. But do you see what the writer is saying here? Her husband is known in the gates. Now, the gates of the city were the places where revered, respected, socially, you know, in the upper crust. These, these were the guys that would sit in the gates and conduct their business. And this man, this, this man who was the husband of this virtuous woman, he was one that was to be sit in, in the gates. And do you see how he is identified? Yes, before the others in the gates, he is a someone. But to Scripture, and as far as who he, he is as a reputation, his reputation is wrapped up in who she is. He is identified not as who he is, but as who she is. He's identified as her husband. Her reputation, therefore, is an asset. It's an inspiration to her husband. Do you realize that the virtuous woman elevates her husband's social status? You see, she is not known because of her relationship to him. No, it's the other way around. He is known because of his relationship to her. Her husband is known in the gates. She had something to do with making him known, to making him something. Mothers inspire. Wives inspire with their reputation. And then in verse 26, we see the last of it. It says, She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. Ladies, you inspire with your wisdom. You inspire with your words. You inspire with your love that comes out maybe in your prayers. It's through those words of wisdom, it's those things that will ring in a child's life for years to come. When you encourage, when you give that bit of wisdom, when you give that bit of advice, and you think it's falling on deaf ears, recognize it will continue with that young person for many years to come. In fact, many, many great leaders, and I can't give you all the quotes this morning, but one in particular that I always like to bring out this time of year is from Abraham Lincoln himself, one of the greatest leaders our country has ever seen. Abraham Lincoln said this, I remember my mother's prayers, and they have always followed me. They have clung to me all my life. Mothers, you're having an impact. You are inspiring your children. You may not feel it on the day-to-day. -day. You are having an impact with what you do and how you, how you treat your family and how you provide for them. You are having an influence. And King Lemuel's mother was no exception. She was used of God to give us this scripture, Proverbs 31, that informs us about God's intentions for motherhood. You see, God created women to have a very important influence, impact, and inspiration in the lives of their children and their families. And you know, maybe this is why King Lemuel, who we know nothing about except for the one thing, the meaning of his name is so important. What was his name again? King Lemuel means belonging to God. Maybe that's all God really wants us to know about him. 
because it was through the impact of his mother that Lemuel became what really mattered. He became someone that belonged to God. He became someone that was sold out for him. Mothers, recognize maybe you're bringing up a King Lemuel in your house. If you have one thing as a legacy to leave behind, let it be a legacy of faith. Let it be a legacy that says, I have children that will recognize God in their life and be sold out for Him. That's why we see in the end of the chapter these three verses, these, these recognitions. And ladies, you may not be getting this in your life, but I want you to know that as you appeal to do the right thing and be the godly kind of mother and wife that you need to be, these things will be true of you. It says in verse 28, Her children arise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praiseth her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful, beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. Mothers, whether you've achieved Proverbs 31 status or not, that's not the point. Today you need to know that you were created with a great purpose, that you wield great power in the lives of those around you, and that as you follow this road map that you've been given in Proverbs 31, that it may be a journey, it may be a lifelong journey for you to move to that state where you are the virtuous woman, but realize as you go down that path that your influence and your impact and your inspiration will be used by the Lord around with everyone that God's put you in contact with. Husbands, dads, be quick to acknowledge that influence, that impact, and that inspiration that your wife or your mother has been in your life and in the lives of your children. Children, and I'm not only talking to young children, if you still have your mother with you, take the time today, take the time regularly to praise your mother. To, especially if you're a young child, obey your mother. Observe your mother. Be a model after your mother. And know that she always will have your best interest in her heart. Allow her to have that influence, that impact, and that inspiration that God has created her to be in your life. You'll be glad you did. Thank you for joining us this morning in this special Mother's Day service. I hope that you spend the time to honor those ladies in your life, uh, even not just today, but even through the days ahead. And to all the ladies out there, whether you're a mother or not, I'd like to say, Happy Mother's Day.